Good evening, you're watching the news on Croatian television. The tighter border controls that have been implemented in line with an EU directive along the external borders of the Schengen area continue to cause long delays at border crossings between Croatia and Slovenia. Prime Minister Andrej Plenković has said that the situation requires more flexibility from Slovenia. This is not up to Brussels. The directive allows for a transition from systematic controls, which entails the checking and scanning of each and every passport and personal identification card, to targeted controls, allowing border police to determine which passengers require a detailed check. We have adopted targeted controls and notified our neighbors. We are communicating with the Slovene side and Slovenia, regardless of the fact that it is in Schengen, has to do the only thing possible at this time. Hungary has already done this. I see absolutely no reason why we can't return to the regime in place prior to April 7th. Meanwhile, Croatian member of European Parliament Dubravka Šuica of the HDZ noted today that Croatian MEPs had already submitted a request to the heads of European institutions in which they call for relaxed border controls at crossings between Croatia and the Schengen area. After securing the Agricor concern an 80 million euro loan last night, Ante Ramjak is wrapping up his first week as government's special commissioner for Agricor's restructuring. Agricor's new management is pleased with the week behind them, saying they have achieved the three goals they set out, paying out workers' salaries, stabilizing Agricor's operations, and paying out the company suppliers. Along with selecting a consulting company to assist in the restructuring process, the next major task is to resolve the problem of promissory notes issued by Agricor. I am hopeful that by the end of the day, we will reach an agreement on placing a moratorium on the payment of promissory notes. Two Russian banks, including the state-owned Sperbank, which is Agricor's largest creditor, are not participating in the new loan deal with Agricor. The banks are still in negotiations with Agricor for an additional 70 million euro loan. However, they have set some conditions for this to go through. The primary condition is that Sperbank's previous 100 million euro loan issued in March be given status of the oldest outstanding loan, meaning that it would have priority when it comes to payment. The entire loan was intended to stabilize the situation. I can also tell you that the details of the loan, 75 million euro was spent on paying suppliers, 21 million euro was spent on tax obligations, and 4 million was spent on the salaries of employees of the Agricor concern. In other news, five people have been injured in an explosion in Split's northern port today. All five are being treated for burns and other injuries sustained when an explosion erupted in a grain silo in the port's northern terminal. A police investigation is underway. In international news, Washington has confirmed that U.S. forces dropped the largest non-nuclear bomb in history in the Afghan region of Nangarhar, near the border with Pakistan. The so-called mother of all bombs contained close to 10 metric tons of explosives and destroyed everything within a 300 meter radius. The U.S. was targeting a system of tunnels and caves used by the Islamic State. The Afghan Defense Ministry has reported that 36 militants were killed in the attack. Everybody knows exactly what happened. So, And what I do is I authorize my military. We have the greatest military in the world and they've done a job as usual. So we have given them total authorization and that's what they're doing. And frankly, that's why they've been so successful lately. If you look at what's happened over the last eight weeks and compare that's what really to what's happened over the last eight years, you'll see there's a tremendous difference. While meeting with his Syrian and Iranian counterparts, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that both Russia and the United States had agreed that the recent American attack on Syria must not happen again. Lavrov said that a future attack would have serious consequences to global security. The U.S. claims the attack was in response to the Syrian government using chemical weapons against its own people. Russia, however, believes the victims were killed by toxic agents released from a rebel chemical arsenal. I discussed this in detail with U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, and we agreed this cannot happen again. As far as chemical weapons are concerned, we will insist on an independent and objective investigation by the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons and other experts, because this event has alarmed the entire world. After analyzing data collected by the Cassini spacecraft, NASA scientists have hypothesized that plumes of gas erupting from Saturn's moon Enceladus could be proof of the existence of microbes and other forms of life. The gas from the moon, which has an ocean of liquid water under a crust of ice, contains hydrogen. Hydrogen coming from the plume of Enceladus and the fact that it could support potentially microbes with energy 
on the seafloor of Enceladus. Now, this finding is the result of 12 years of Cassini investigations, and it really represents a capstone finding for the mission because we now know that Enceladus has almost all of the ingredients that you would need to support life as we know it on Earth. The traditional following of the cross procession ended on the island of Khar this morning. The Easter tradition, which dates back more than five centuries, begins on Holy Thursday and ends 25 kilometers later on the morning of Good Friday. This year, Prime Minister Andrei Plenković was among those to join the procession. The Prime Minister's father is from Svirce, one of the villages on the procession route. The procession is inscribed on UNESCO's list of intangible heritage. This shows the Christian tradition on Khwar, devotion to our faith, national pride, and everything that is part of the Croatian identity. This is a beautiful evening, and I am pleased to be here in the village my family comes from. Taking a quick look at sports, in tennis, Borna Cioric has advanced to the semi-final of the ATP tournament underway in Marrakesh after beating Spaniard Albert Ramos Vignolas 4-6, 6-4, 6-4 in the quarterfinal today. In regional ABA basketball, Red Star Belgrade won its third consecutive league title after beating Cedevita Zagreb 77-61 last night. Red Star swept the best of five final, winning the first three games. This was Cedevita's fourth final appearance and fourth loss. And now the forecast for tomorrow. Variable cloud cover with intermittent rain in the interior and on the northern Adriatic. There's a chance of downpours and thunderstorms, especially in the afternoon and evening. Partly sunny and dry on the central and southern coast. Winds will be mild inland with a mild to moderate southeasterly on the Adriatic. Morning lows of 6 to 11 degrees Celsius inland, 9 to 14 on the coast, will give way to highs of 13 to 18 degrees in the interior, 18 to 22 on the Adriatic. The three-day forecast for the interior calls for variable and unstable weather with intermittent rain and thunderstorms. Expect cooler temperatures. The coast will also see variable weather with intermittent rain. Expect more sun on Monday. And that wraps up the news. Be sure to join us again tomorrow night.